March 27, 1975, a prophet named Ruth Green prophesied that I would. The multiple times that Denzel Washington repeatedly revealed this prophecy that changed his life forever. Here he is sharing the exact same story on Oprah several decades earlier. I was sitting in my mother's beauty shop and I see this woman through the mirror. She's behind me under the dryer. Every time I looked up, she was just like this. Looking she at said, you. said, somebody give me a piece of paper. And she wrote. And this prophecy was followed by a supernatural experience he had years later that he shares in this clip with his pastor, Dr. A.R. Bernard. When it came time to come down to the altar, I said, you know, this time I'm just gonna go down there and give it up and let go and experience something I've never experienced in my life. A supernatural, if not once in a lifetime experience that I couldn't completely understand. Now in this video, we're gonna look at how this actually all played out, the specific details of what that prophecy was and how Denzel is attempting to live that out today. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan and this channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. So if you're new here or if you're not new here, please do me a favor, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button as a huge percentage of the people that watch this channel are unfortunately not subscribed. All right, let's get into the story. Now check out how Dr. A.R. Bernard responds to Denzel's supernatural encounter with God and what Denzel admits happens next. And I got a Bible passage at the end of this video that's going to glue all this together for you and I, but take a listen. That moment, the power of that moment, you and I, when we were at lunch, you were telling me like it happened to you the day before we went to lunch. Right. It was still so real and so powerful. Mm. And that kept you somewhat grounded as you were exposed to other things, correct? In spite of myself. It kept me grounded in spite of myself. I, I mean, mm. I, I accepted it. I definitely experienced it, but I wasn't ready to live it. Ah. Ah. I wasn't ready to live it. That was 90. I don't know how old I was then, but I wasn't ready to live it then. And and I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one who obviously not the only one who's gone through that kind of experience. So right. So, right. so I had to, I had to go through all of that. Now to be honest, we're entering some really interesting territory. Denzel has a prophecy given to him a couple years before that we're going to unpack here in just a moment on what specifically was said. Denzel then has a supernatural encounter with God. Comes forward, goes to the prayer room. Something happens that he cannot deny. Yet, in that, he says that he was not ready to live it. Now, we're going to come back to this in just a moment. But first, let's get into the details of what the prophecy was and how Denzel is attempting to live this out today. A woman prophesied years and years ago that I would travel the world and preach to millions of people. And I remember, you know, and I have traveled the world. And I don't know if I'm a preacher, but through my work, I've, I've spoken. And, and now I try to speak more in public. But... I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. And here he is sharing more of that on Oprah. But she wrote prophecy and she said, boy, you're going to speak to millions of people. She says, you're hmm. going to travel the world and you're going to speak to millions of people. And I asked my mother, I said, well, who is this woman? The gift of prophecy. She said, well, she's one of the oldest church members in the town. And, and she she's had known that gift. to have the gift of prophecy. And she wrote down 1975, she wrote prophecy. So I thought, is, so am I supposed to become a preacher? I asked my pastor, should I become a preacher? He's like, no, no, you're doing good. Right where you are. <laughs> Saying all this to say, I have always looked at what I do as not preaching, but maybe as my pulpit, you know, to it, the roles that I played, I looked at the spiritual evolution of those characters, not just the characters. So Denzel talks about this prophecy. The prophecy was that he was going to preach before millions and millions of people. At the same time, he acknowledges that though he gave his life to Jesus in a public profession of faith, he wasn't ready to live it. He then says that he feels like his work, which contains quite a bit of explicit movies, even movies containing nudity and all kinds of violence, his work he saw as an extension in a way to leverage his audience in his pulpit. Now, he gets more specific about this in one of his darkest roles that he actually changed because of a Bible verse. I always looked for that for lack of a better word, angle. What's hmm. the story? That the only thing I wrote on the cover of Training Day was the wages of sin is death. I had the end of that film changed. For in order for me to justify living in the worst way, I had to die in the worst way. He died in a very small way in the, in the script. But I purposely wanted him to be knocked down on the ground and crawl like a snake. I purposely wanted everyone in the community to turn on him and I wanted him to die in the most violent way. So for many, many years and decades, I did that through my work and through my philanthropy and through being a good guy and all of those things. That's not the case anymore. 
So before we get into what he believes the fulfillment of this prophecy is now in this season of his life, it's important for us to acknowledge what is actually being said here. Now, some of you guys may not know a lot of Denzel's work, but Training Day is a movie where he plays a villain. And this is a corrupt cop that is completely out of control. And he's doing all kinds of shady stuff. And Denzel says that when he got the script, he put the wages of sin as death and changed the ending of the movie because he wanted to drive home that biblical principle. That is how he was attempting to leverage his platform to point people to biblical principles, even though he acknowledges that he wasn't quite ready to live it yet. And later in this conversation, he gets into specifics of what he believes the reflection of that prophecy is today in his life. Now that he has more clarity and he's seemingly surrendered and living out his faith more. But that brings us to an interesting question. What do we do with the idea that someone can give their life to God as a child, potentially get a prophecy as a teenager, come forward in a public profession of faith as an adult, yet still not be in the spot to live it? Maybe because of the allures of Hollywood, maybe because of the types of roles he felt he had to take, whatever it is. There's a Bible verse we're going to look at in a second that I believe actually communicates God's heart for those of us that may be struggling with our faith. But first, listen to how Dr. A.R. Bernard summarizes the experience that Denzel had and how it was a deposit of sorts. And then we're going to look at this Bible verse. It's amazing how God will give you an indelible mark in terms of an experience that no matter how much you may stray away from or deviate from, you never forget that moment, the power mm. of that moment. You and I, when we were at lunch, you were telling me like it happened to you the day before we went to lunch. Right. It was still so real and so powerful. And that kept you somewhat grounded as you were exposed to other things, correct? In spite of myself. Mm. It kept me grounded in spite of myself. I, I mean, I, I accepted it. I definitely experienced it, but I wasn't ready to live it. Ah. So this supernatural encounter that Denzel has with God kept him grounded in spite of himself. He wasn't fully ready to live it, yet it kept him anchored. And it reminded me of this passage from Romans chapter 11. And in verse 29, it says, For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable, just as you were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too now have become disobedient in order that they may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. So God's gifts, God's call, God's purpose for those of us that have placed our faith in Jesus are irrevocable. And that when we place our faith in Jesus, he will preserve us despite ourselves. Just like in the case of Denzel, he wasn't ready to quote unquote live it, God's deposit remained in him. Now I'm not saying not living God's ways is something we should do. Saying you're not ready is not a wise move if you are a child of God. And I'm sure Denzel would agree that him not fully living it was not in his best interest and definitely was not something that didn't come without consequences. But it does remind me how the incredible grace of God abounds even when we fall short. So now almost 70 years old, this is how Denzel processes the prophecy that he was given all the way back in the 70s. Listen to what he says. Not just to do good the right way, but to honor my mother and my father mm. by the way I live my life the rest of my days on this earth. I'm here to serve, to help, to provide. In every prayer, you know, the ego's interesting. You just don't know. But in every prayer, all I hear is feed my sheep. Mm. That's what God wants me to do. I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, what I found out in the last couple of years of hearing it, that there's all kinds of sheep. Mm. Not everybody wants to go right to the... So that's why I talk to experienced shepherds <laughs> like yourself to, 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 to help guide me. Now listen to how Denzel warns against the dangers of fame. Yes, I've been high up on the mountain. I've been blessed, but that's a slippery slope. Yeah. And it's lonely up there. Yeah. Hmm. You know, people don't know that side of it. And listen to how later in the conversation, he acknowledges that the role of the villain that he played in Training Day was actually easier for him to play than any role where he was the hero and the good guy. Play Training Day is the easiest part I play. There's hmm. more of that in me than Cry Freedom. Life has humbled me. I used to say I wanted to be the best actor in the world. When I won the second Oscar, I said I wanted to be the best actor I can be. Now I don't even necessarily want to be an actor. It's not my goal anymore. It's not a burning desire for me. I may segue out of it in the next few years, if not sooner. But to go all the way back to your question, none of that 
would have happened without the family. So it's interesting that Denzel confesses that playing the villain is actually easier for him than playing the hero. It's interesting that a deposit of faith has been expressed in different ways, imperfect ways, mind you, and is now starting to fully reveal himself that he may be transitioning from acting. But the good news in all of this is that us living God's ways is actually in our best interest. That Denzel is telling you, I've, I've been to all of the high places in life, I've experienced all the wealth, I've experienced all the money, I've experienced all the fame, and it's not as cracked up as you think it is. That we don't have to wait decades in between giving our life to Jesus and being ready to live it out. That we could start right now by simply acknowledging what Denzel said in that video, which is it is easier for us to play the villain because that's naturally more in us. That we are fallen, broken, in need of a savior because of our sin. And that is exactly what Jesus does by his work on the cross. He saves us from ourselves and he saves us from the consequences of our sins. And he creates a pathway for us to be in right standing with the Father, ultimately going to heaven in eternity. But it's not just about getting saved and going to heaven, that in our relationship with Christ, we get to usher in the kingdom of heaven by participating in his work on this side of eternity. That we get to be the hands and feet of Jesus by walking in the irrevocable calls and purposes that he has for all of us to know him and make him known through whatever medium that we have. And that's the interesting part about Denzel's story over these last couple of decades of knowing that he comes from a faith background, but he's had struggles and here he is now. And perhaps we all can look at it and say, what is the cautionary tale and how can we compress time so it doesn't take us decades from walking God's purpose for our life, but that perhaps we can move further along quicker into things that God has for us in the here and now. And I believe all of that starts with a simple daily commitment that we discussed in my previous video. Check that out here and the possibility of breakthrough for you by this one simple commitment.